Uh, our next witness is William Garman. Mr. Garman is the president of Headwaters Resources Incorporated in South Jordan, Utah. Headwaters Resources is a marketer of coal ash combustion products. Mr. Garman, you'll be recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the committee. Our company is the nation's largest marketer of coal combustion byproducts in the country with operations on over 100 power plant sites. As a manager and marketer of coal ash, Headwaters touches every link in this chain of activity that makes beneficial use of the material possible. Small businesses comprise a significant portion of many of the links in this chain. As other witnesses at this hearing will testify, using coal ash instead of disposing it creates significant benefits for the environment and users of the material. The environment benefits by conserving natural resources and constructing fewer landfills. Use of coal ash to, relate, to replace cement also results in millions of tons of greenhouse gas emission reduction. Coal ash users benefit by being able to make products that are stronger and more durable than products made without coal ash. Coal ash also has properties that help engineers solve specific problems, such as the presence of reactive aggregates and concrete. But just because the benefits of using coal ash are great does not mean it's easy to get people to use it. Significant investments must be made to be able to transport and deliver materials to users so that it is available when they need it. Users must be educated on how to property, properly use the materials, the benefits of the materials, and how to properly handle them. Additionally, it's important to remember that coal ash users have alternatives to using coal ash and can choose to eliminate its use. In my written testimony, I describe several levels of the coal ash beneficial use industry and explain how each level must respond to a hazardous when disposed designation for coal ash. These levels include ash producers, utilities that generate it, ash marketers like Headwaters, ash technology developers and providers like PMI Ash Technologies, product specifiers, ash users, and end users. All these parties will find it more difficult to use coal ash if it is designated hazardous for disposal. If any of these levels decided that using coal ash was a bad idea, then the beneficial use of coal ash would significantly decrease. As I describe in my written testimony, all of these levels would face major challenges if coal ash were designated as a hazardous waste for disposal. Some of the participants in the coal ash chain will worry about their health and safety if coal ash is labeled hazardous. Other participants will worry about being sued by people who will worry about their health and safety if coal ash is labeled hazardous. Most of the participants will have to deal with a host of unanswered questions relating to how they will have to change their handling of the material if coal ash is labeled hazardous. The damage from this proposal is already being felt. In proposing a hazardous when disposed regulatory framework for coal ash, the U.S. EPA has already created a new barrier to increasing the beneficial use of coal ash. End users exposed to a barrage of negative news articles about coal ash have already begun calling our concrete producer customers asking if the concrete they are using contains a dangerous material. Some product specifiers, such as the Los Angeles Unified School District, have already moved, removed coal ash from their concrete specifications as a direct result of the EPA's proposal. We are seeing an increase in requests to amend indemnification language in supply and purchase agreements, pushing any potential liabilities and risks all the way down the coal ash supply chain. Many small businesses along the supply chain will be forced to make difficult decisions regarding the continued use of coal ash in their products. Many of these businesses were built around the beneficial use of coal ash. In meetings with me and other representatives of the coal ash industry, EPA officials have indicated they support the beneficial use of ash. But actions speak louder than words, and EPA has done precious little to demonstrate support for legitimate coal ash use. To the contrary, EPA has unilaterally and without explanation removed its coal combustion products partnership information from its website. End users seeking information from the EPA about coal ash are now greeted with the single statement, the Coal Combustion Products Partnership Program web pages have been removed while the program is being reevaluated. The irony of this is also unnecessary. The actual engineering standards for disposal facilities are essentially the same under the EPA's uh, two proposals. 
The EPA's hazards proposal appears calculated primarily to get federal enforcement authority over the regulatory program. EPA appears to be willing to sacrifice a substantial and beneficial industry merely to obtain greater regulatory influence. EPA should do what's right for the environment, not what's best for the EPA's authority. The best course of action for our nation's environment is one that encourages safe and beneficial coal ash use as a preferred alternative to disposal. Whatever material remains unused can then be disposed in a safe and effective manner. The hazardous wind disposed approach proposed by the EPA will have exactly the opposite effect, reducing coal ash use activities and thereby creating more waste that will be landfilled. Thank you for the invitation to testify and for your interest in this important topic.